Reforesting faith. What trees teach us about the nature of God and his love for us. By Matthew Sleeth. Every tree has its enemy. Few have an advocate. What tea laying the groundwork. The Lord God took the man and put him into the garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it, for in the day that thou eatest thereof thou shalt surely die. Genesis 2 verse 15 to 17 What trees teach us? They are like trees planted by streams of water which yield their fruit in its season and their leaves do not wither. In all that they do, they prosper. Psalm 1 verse 3 I love trees, I always have. No one told me to love them, I just do. I love looking at them, I love sitting in their shade. I love hearing the sound of the wind rustling through their leaves. But what can trees teach us? Specifically, what can trees teach us about the nature of God and his love for us? Nearly two decades ago, during a difficult season of my life, I began to search for answers to these questions. At the time, I did not believe in God. I was trained in the sciences as a physician, and my search eventually led me on a nature walk through the Bible. This book, Reforesting Faith, shares what I learned. Before you embark on this trail with me, be warned. My job, my home, my family, the books I read, even the state I live in and the places I travel have all been completely changed by this journey through the woods. God's Trees Trees grow older, taller, and bigger than anything else on the earth. They have been with us since the beginning of time. We humans owe our very lives to the sap, bark, wood, flowers, and the fruit of trees. We are their masters, yet they are our stake in the future. And trees are beautiful. On the tops of mountains, bending over the sides of rivers, ringing the boreal latitudes, dripping wet with equatorial showers, trees blanket our world. At night, when the air is clear, trees can be seen grouped together at the edge of the forest. Illuminated in silvery moonlight, they appear to have been stopped mid sentence All night long they draw a deep breath, hold it in for one count, and then from dawn to dusk exhale life-giving oxygen. (sighs) The smell of a pine forest on a hot day, the sound of palms clattering in a tropical breeze, the sight of yellow maple leaves raining down through an autumn sky. These are all evidence of trees giving praise to their creator. For those with ears to hear and eyes to see, the enormity of the gift of trees impresses itself upon us anew each day. Only God can make a tree. Embarking on the trail. Reforesting faith faith is about trees in the Bible. Reading it won't make your credit card debt disappear. It won't make your teeth whiter or your hair shinier. This is not a self-help book. It's about gaining insight into why God placed our great-great-grandparents in a garden of trees and told them to dress and keep them. It will help you to understand why George MacDonald, C.S. Lewis, Tolkien and other great Christian writers cast the heroes of their stories as the protectors of trees and the bad guys as their enemies. For the majority of my life I did not believe in God. 
That's not the case anymore. In fact, the trees in the Bible are a crucial part of what brought me to faith. Christianity is the only religion that weaves trees from one end of its sacred text to the other. Every important character and every major event has a tree marking the spot. There is a tree in the first and the last chapter of the Bible, in the first psalm and in the first gospel. Throughout this book, we'll look at how the Bible uses trees to reveal spiritual truths about humanity and God. We'll even see how the Bible contains assertions about trees not discovered by science until the modern era. Christians bring trees indoors once a year to celebrate the birth of their Savior. But many believe that Christians are anti-trees. Why? This is one of the questions reforesting faith will answer. We'll go on a journey from Genesis to Revelation, looking at how God uses trees in the Bible. And just like in the Bible, it's okay to skip forward to read about Jesus in part 3, and then come back to chapter 1.